Hi, it's Katrina. From lizards with death spikes to frogs who freeze solid, here are nine bizarre ways animals protect themselves. Number 9. Blood Squirting Eyes The short-horned lizard is one of my favorite animals. Often referred to as a horny toad because of its flattened round body, it has short stubby legs, a crown of horns on the head, and spines along the back and sides. When I was a kid, I used to think they were baby dinosaurs. Its build might make it cute, but it is not great for it to run away. It is a slow-moving lizard, making it easy to catch. So to protect itself, it has developed a very bizarre defense strategy. When a horned lizard feels threatened, it remains completely still, hoping not to be seen. If the predator gets too close, the lizard will puff up its body so it appears larger and more difficult to swallow. This defense mechanism is especially effective against snakes, who swallow their prey whole. When all else fails, it will squirt blood from its eye. That's a whole other level. Most horned lizard species can avoid predation by squirting an aimed stream of blood up to five feet long from the corners of their eyes. By restricting the blood flow leaving its head, it causes tiny blood vessels around its eyes to rupture, thus enabling it to squirt blood such a long distance. The blood has a chemical that makes it very unpleasant for dogs, wolves, and coyotes. One taste is usually enough to cause the animal to retreat, hopefully sparing the lizard's life. In case you're wondering, horned lizards rarely squirt blood at humans. Sadly, the horned lizard populations have been declining due to destruction of their native habitats and the pet trade. Number 8. Self-Explosion There are several insect species who deliberately explode as an ultimate form of defense against predators. One of them is an ant called Colobopsis soundersi, which lives on Borneo, an island shared between Malaysia, Indonesia, and Brunei. The ant has two oversized mandibular or jaw glands, which run the entire length of its body. When it feels threatened, it contracts its abdomen, causing its mandibular glands to literally explode and spew a sticky secretion in all directions. The substance is a chemical irritant with corrosive properties that entangles and immobilizes the victim. Another insect that does this is Neocapritermes saracua a termite endemic to French Guiana that commissions older community members to carry out self-explosive attacks against enemy termites. The species possesses an explosive backpack in the form of a pair of abdominal glands that produce toxic blue crystals, which are stored in an external pouch. When enemy termites attack a nest, older bugs rush to the front lines and wait to be bitten. Their explosive backpacks react to the enemy's saliva by bursting and spraying a lethal and paralyzing chemical on any nearby predators, killing the hero in the process. The formal term for this purposeful self-annihilation is autothysis, which is defined as a process by which a creature self-destructs as a result of an internal rupturing or explosion of an organ. Number 7. Deadly Projectile Vomiting the Fulmer family of seabirds consists of two living species of ordinary-looking birds who hatch cute but ordinary-looking chicks. But as we all know, looks can be deceiving. And as harmless and innocent as Fulmar chicks may seem, it's a bad idea to get close enough to make one feel threatened. These baby birds are equipped with a stomach part called a proventriculus, which makes and stores a putrid oil. If a predator gets too close, a chick will projectile vomit the foul substance onto the animal's face. This effectively repels whatever creature was thinking about eating the chick for its next meal. But for some predators, the consequences don't end there. Some animals, like foxes, squirrels, and rats, will be disgusted but otherwise unharmed. On the other hand, for certain predatory birds who occasionally target fulmar chicks, including the squaw and the sheathbill, this defense mechanism is lethal. While the oily vomit itself is not poisonous, it inhibits the bird's movement, and this disabling effect eventually leads to its death. The substance becomes stuck to the predator's feathers and glues them together, rendering the bird unable to fly. If the bird tries washing the substance off, it quickly discovers that it is no longer buoyant due to the weight of the oil and drowns. Fulmars also breed on cliffs, so on top of everything else, the predator may just fall to its death. Those birds better learn quick to eat something else. And now for number six. But first, wanted to give a big thank you to Jem Lin and Amanda's World for supporting this channel. It means a lot. Be sure to subscribe and join us if you haven't already. Number six, suffocating slime. Based on its appearance alone, the tubular grayish pink hagfish has no impressive physical traits. 
but as you're about to learn, it's pretty fascinating in its own right, and there is a reason it's nicknamed the slime eel and the snot snake. The hagfish is what's called a living fossil. It's been around for hundreds of millions of years and remains virtually unchanged from its original form from back in the pre-dinosaur days. Hagfish look incredibly similar to eels, but unlike other fish species, they lack vertebrae and a jaw. But you don't necessarily need to examine one's insides to tell it apart from an eel, because hagfish are notorious for their ability to ooze a distinctive slime when they are stressed or threatened. One fish has 100 slime glands and typically secretes a teaspoon or less of the substance at a time. That's not a lot of slime, but the gunk rapidly expands by up to 10,000 times and attaches to anything it touches. The slime is made of mucus and protein threads, and despite its appearance, it's not sticky. Instead, it's soft, strong, and elastic. The cloud of goo that is quickly stirred up from the secretion can clog the gills of would-be predators and can also cause them to gag. Besides protecting hagfish from direct attacks by predators, the slime also helps them to protect their own food supply. Hagfish secrete the substance while feeding to deter other animals from the temptation of trying to steal their meal. The slime's ability to create a huge mess was especially evident when in Oregon in 2017, a truck carrying a live supply of hagfish overturned, covering the highway and at least one car in the substance. Scientists are still learning about the hagfish and its resilient goo, which is so strong some experts believe it may be useful for creating a new material similar to lycra. Number 5. The Flying Fish the flying fish consists of at least 40 fish species who evade their many predators by jumping out of the water and remaining airborne for extended lengths of time. Before takeoff, the fish swims toward the water surface at an upward angle at speeds of up to 37 miles per hour to gain the necessary velocity for achieving flight. When it breaks the surface, it begins rapidly beating its tail, then flaps its large pectoral fins to become airborne. Flying fish can glide for distances of up to 655 feet and at heights of up to 4 feet above the water. By flapping their tails when they get close to the surface, they can continuously glide without fully returning to the water, and have been recorded doing so for distances as long as 1,312 feet. Thanks to evolution, their physical characteristics make gliding possible. The flying fish has a streamlined build and torpedo-shaped body that help it gain enough underwater speed to successfully break the water's surface, and its wing-like pectoral fins enable it to achieve and maintain flight. Number 4. Fecal Shields there are several beetle species who protect themselves from predators as larvae by covering themselves in their own waste, including the potato beetle, the sumac flea beetle, and other members of the leaf beetle family. The scientific term for this armor is fecal shields, and the larvae of some species acquire complete coverage in less than 12 hours after birth. This strange and kind of gross practice is an ideal form of protection for numerous reasons. It's easy, convenient, and never involves a shortage of materials, and a newborn larva can get started on the shield building process right away. The size, shape, and texture of these constructions vary between species. Some are basic blobs, while others are skillfully woven or sculpted. Some fecal shields are carried like umbrellas and can even be used like battle axes against predators. This form of protection isn't simply off-putting, it's also potentially lethal. Larvae eat plants containing chemical compounds that are toxic to most insects and can kill them if ingested. But fecal shields aren't foolproof. In fact, researchers disagree on their level of effectiveness, and there are predators who have found ways to break through even the toughest shields. Number 3. Dual Camouflage the Japatella heathy octopus and the Onychotuthis banksy squid can change from transparent to opaque red in less than a second, thanks to their ability to activate skin pigments at will. Both shades are advantageous for remaining hidden from certain predators. These species live at mid-level depths between 2,000 and 3,000 feet below the ocean surface, where dual camouflage comes in especially handy against the array of hunters who lurk in the same region. At these depths, most predators hunt by looking for an animal's shadow against the lighter backdrop of the sun's barely penetrating rays from above. The default transparent status of J. Heathy and O. Banksy and their reflective eyes and guts reduce their silhouette thus making them less detectable to predators. These species must also protect themselves against fish who hunt by using bioluminescence to detect the presence of potential prey, such as anglerfish. 
Bioluminescence is the ability of certain living organisms to emit light, and the octopus and squid's reflective eyes and guts can serve as a dead giveaway to those hunters, who light up their surroundings while on the prowl. When Jay Heathy and O. Banksy detect another creature's bioluminescence, they immediately turn red and blend into their dark surroundings, making themselves undetectable to those predators. They revert back to their transparent state as soon as they are no longer exposed to light. Number 2. Built-in Death Spikes The Spanish-ribbed newt is an aquatic salamander that is native to Spain and Portugal, or the Iberian Peninsula. It's not a strong swimmer, so it spends most of its time hiding among underwater vegetation and rocks in habitats with still or slow-moving water, such as ponds, lagoons, marshes, and irrigation ditches. But like all creatures, the Spanish-ribbed newt can't completely avoid predators and must sometimes defend itself against them. When threatened or attacked, it forces its ribs to puncture through its body. Once exposed, they function like poisonous barbs. The newt pushes its ribs outward by increasing their angle to the spine by up to 50 degrees, while otherwise remaining completely still. The movement of the ribs stretches the skin to the point of piercing it, and they are essentially repurposed as stinging tools that resemble exposed spines. Meanwhile, the creature secretes a milky, poisonous substance, making the barbs even more lethal. A predator who tries biting a newt or carrying it in their mouth immediately experiences severe pain from the barbs injecting the poison into their skin, and they can also die from this. After all is said and done, the newt's ribs retract back into its body, and it suffers no apparent ill effects thanks to its skin's remarkable healing abilities. Pretty amazing, right? Number 1. The Frog That Dies and Comes Back to Life Not all defense mechanisms protect animals from predators. Sometimes they combat other survival challenges, such as the elements. While many amphibians migrate to warmer regions to avoid cold weather, the North American wood frog would have to travel unrealistically long distances to escape the bitter Canadian and Alaskan winters. Instead, it freezes every year when winter approaches, and it remains frozen for up to seven months straight until spring arrives. During the initial one to two week phase of the process, a wood frog freezes at night and thaws out during the day. When consistent freezing temperatures set in, it freezes full time and enters a state of suspended animation. This versatile species is also capable of adjusting to fall springs, when temperatures temporarily rise before once again plummeting to below freezing. Two thirds of the frog's body freezes solid. Its heart stops beating, its blood stops flowing, and its glucose levels drastically increase. It even stops breathing. This process essentially renders the creature dead, and while being in that condition would kill most beings, it's paradoxically life-saving for the wood frog. While the frog is frozen, its cells stop communicating, but they continue functioning individually thanks to a syrupy antifreeze in their blood made from glucose and glycogen. This prevents lethal ice crystals from forming. This concoction is the product of higher-than-usual glucose levels, which prevents water from leaving the cells. It's a highly effective survival mechanism. In 2014, after a two-year study, researchers revealed that none of the wood frogs they observed died. When spring comes, wood frogs thaw out while their bodies turn as much of their stored glucose as possible back into glycogen. They then urinate whatever's left and simply resume their daily froggy activities, such as getting some grub and looking for a mate. Wood frogs actually spend more time frozen than they do in their thawed state. Thanks for watching! Weren't these defense mechanisms amazing? And some are kind of gross. What other fascinating and unusual animal traits would you like to learn about? Let me know in the comments below, and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. See you next time. Bye!